Hi everybody, welcome back to the joy of trucking. I'm Kevin, I'm a solo OTR driver for Werner Enterprises. Uh, we got a question from a viewer about splitting the DOT clock. I wanna try and explain it as simply as I can and try and make it easy for, for new drivers. I had, a, I had a tough time getting a handle on this myself, so I know what you're going through. So hit that subscribe button and uh, you don't have to give me a thumbs up yet, maybe later though. Uh, yeah, sit back, I wanna tell you a story about this. You all know the basic rules, right? You have, in 24 hours, you've got a 14 hour period that you can actually work. So when you start your shift, that begins to count. And in that time, you can drive 11 hours. So while the truck is in motion, that clock is ticking. And when you stop, you can stop that or it automatically stops itself. So then when you're not driving, but you're still in the 14 hours, you're on duty. It's counting down those 14 hours. And then of course the eight hour clock tells you you have to take a 30 minute break every eight hours or so. So what that leaves after the 14 hours is you need 10 hours of rest and then the whole thing starts over again the next day, right? So we had a new driver and got into a situation where she wanted to split the clock. So Werner actually has a phone number. You can call the logs department and they will look at your look at your clock, you know, the same thing that you have on your display here in the truck, and they can punch it up on their computers. And they kind of said, okay, you're gonna do like a 7-3 or an 8-2 or this or that. And and so that's what happened to me the first time I tried it, which was very confusing because in my mind, I'm splitting the 14 hour clock, right? I'm, I'm saying, okay, I've been on duty for, you know, half a day, something's come up and it's gonna, it, I'm just gonna sit here and waste a lot of time. And then I still wanna drive, I still wanna make as many miles as I can after I get moving again, but it's gonna be several hours from now. So the way I'm thinking that 14 hour clock, I'm gonna put a gap in it somewhere. And then after that, I can still drive or I can still work for the, the rest of those 14 hours. If I still wanna drive the maximum, you know, those 11 hours, I can still do it, even though I had a huge break in the middle of the day for some reason. And the way, the way they kind of look at it is what you're doing is splitting your rest period. So instead of saying, well, you got, you got 14 hours, they're saying in the middle of that, you can start your 10 hour break and do like three hours of it. And then you continue with your 14 hour clock after that. And then you still have to take your seven hour break later or something like to finish your rest. But that's the part that's confusing, you know, like you're, you're looking at two different time frames here and trying to blend them together. Let me give you a story here. I was uh, I was driving along one night and there was a big storm and then there was a big accident. Got in a traffic jam, sat there for almost four hours. And so what happened was I still had, you know, three hours on my driving clock, but my 14 hour clock was winding down while I sat there because I'm still on duty. Technically, I'm still doing my job. I'm still working. So when I got going again, I only had like half an hour left. I had to I had to find a, a place to stop for the night and I actually ran out of time, had to go to personal conveyance. That was a whole other story, but I didn't get to use those hours to, to maximize my, my money, my income for the day. I still had, it's like leaving money on the table. You didn't get to drive for your whole 11 hours. And I like to do that every day if I can and get as much as I can out of the day. So looking back on that, I thought to myself, well, what if I had what if I had gone off duty and it would have split the clock? It would have saved the remaining hours of my driving clock, but also my 14 hour clock. So what happens is you go off duty or you go to sleeper on your ELD, on your hours of service. And after two hours like that, the 14 hour clock will say, hey, we're gonna split and it will save those hours for later. And what happens is, okay, let's say I drive, I work six hours, all right, and then I go to sleeper. I take a nap or I'm off duty or blah, blah, blah. And then after two hours, I continue. I start driving again and the clock, jump, uh, the, the ELD jumps to driving and now your 11 hour and your 14 hour clock are, are counting down. But during those two hours, the 14 hour kept counting. When the 14 hour runs out on our on our Werner tablets here, uh, it'll start saying you have one hour to, you know, before your 14 hours ends. Even though you shut it down for two hours, it'll start saying 
your, your time's running out, your time's running out. And then when it hits 14 hours, it says your clock's run out. But actually, because you were off duty or sleeper for those two hours, it'll, it'll change and it'll, it'll count those other two hours. So what it's doing is giving you the choice of saying, okay, it's been 14 hours, even though I had a break in the middle, that's all I'm gonna do. So it's, it's telling you when the, the normal time is running out. But because you're off duty for a minimum of two hours, it'll give you back that time at the end. And so then now you're into hour 15 and then hour 16, and then it'll say, once again, it'll say, you're running out of hours, you have to stop or you'll be in violation. So it, it puts that gap in after. It, it's giving you the choice whether you want to stop after 14 or use those saved hours. And that can be a little confusing too, because you're driving along, it's late, and you're like, well, you know, normally I would have stopped, and then the thing starts yelling at you, you're, you're gonna be in violation, you're running out, no, 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 no. But if you know that you put in the right split and everything's cool, just keep going. And then it'll tell you again after two hours and say, okay, now you're running out. So that's something that, uh, that I thought about, you know, if I had done that, but you have to be careful because technically you can't just hit sleeper if you know you're gonna be sitting somewhere for two hours if you are technically still working. Like if you're, if you're on the customer's premises or you're, you know, you're about to pick up a load or something like that, you can't use that to like save your time for later and then, and then you know, put off your 14 hours so you can drive those 11 hours if you are technically working. The, the way it's worded, uh, if, you're, if you're, okay, here's another scenario, right? We get to a place in Arizona, it's a live load, so I show up with my empty trailer, they've got like four loading docks that are, that are being used by other people getting loaded or unloaded. There's four trucks ahead of me, right? So I go in the office and I'm like, hi, I'm here for my live load, you know, like, what's the setup? He says, well, those guys at the dock are being loaded. There's guys in front of you out here on the street. They're waiting their turn at the dock. So you're in line, even though your appointment might be now or in 10 minutes or whatever, we do them, we do them in the order that they show up. So you have to wait. So I went back to my truck and I thought, looks to me like I'll be here minimum two hours, maybe a lot longer, depends on how fast these guys are working, if they take lunch, if there's, you know, if it takes a long time for just one truck, there's gonna be quite a delay. So I went off duty, because I knew I could sit there and do nothing for two hours, it could be three, it could be four, and I still wanted to save those hours. I didn't want the 14 hour clock to count down and I'd lose all that time that I could be driving after I get going again. So going off duty was the right thing in that situation because I could take a nap, I could go for a walk, I could go up the street and get a hamburger, uh, all kinds of stuff. I am not working. I could leave the truck and even once I'm at the loading dock, once they're loading me, if they tell me to disconnect and go wait, and leave the trailer at the dock. Again, I'm, I'm disconnected, and if I know they're gonna take two hours, I could go off duty at that point and personal convey myself over to Walmart and do some shopping and go catch a movie and go to a restaurant and then come back in the, in, when the truck's loaded and hook up and go back on duty. So when you know you're gonna have downtime that you can actually do something other than work, that you will not be sitting here at the wheel, staring at the gauges and whatever, waiting for an interminable amount of time. If you know that you could go back there and take a nap, you can you can be on the sleeper on your on your hours of service on your tablet, then you can you can go off. You can save that time. As soon as that truck hits five miles an hour, it goes to driving, and that's it. You're you're suddenly on duty. And if that happened at like an hour and 55 minutes and I moved the truck and it went to driving, that two hour break off duty didn't happen. It had to be the minimum of two hours. You have to be careful that, that you have that two hours uninterrupted so that your, your 14 hour clock will split. Uh, I don't know what the scenario was that, that caused the problem for our viewer. I didn't, I didn't really get all the details, but I hope that this kind of explains it now. So what happened at this place? I went off duty, I took a nap, I read a book, I had lunch, I finally got to the dock, they loaded me up, didn't take too long at the dock, got my paperwork and I headed out. Now I'm driving down the road, I'm using up the rest of my 11 hour clock and there's still enough time in the 14 hour clock that I can drive those the rest of the 11 hours. I'm not gonna run out of the 14 hour clock 
and still have time that I could be making money. So what happens now, the hours that I was off duty are added on to the end of the 14 hours. So when that clock runs out and you have to stop, you must have a 10 hour break before you can start again on the next day's work. The next day, 14 hour clock will commence only after you've had 10 hours of rest. So it's not like I'm gonna take a three hour break now and then I take a seven hour break later when, I, when I'm done driving and then I start again. No, tomorrow your clock is gonna start later than it did the day. Like say I start at 6 a.m. today and then in the afternoon I split my clock two hours so instead of working those 14, I've actually gone to 16 hours. Tomorrow, I can't start until eight o'clock in the morning. So don't forget that fact too. That means for the rest of the week, I can't start as early as I'd like to. I have to start at eight o'clock for the rest of the week. So that's another thing to think about. This affects you until you reset your 70 hours is run up or you, or you go home or whatever for your, for your home time. Uh, so important thing to remember, you gotta be off duty or hit the sleeper if you're on duty in any way, the clock is not gonna split. It has to be that way for a minimum of two hours, and then it will split. And it won't, at the end of the normal 14 hours, it'll start bugging you like, like you're running out of hours, but if you know you were off for those two hours, just keep going. And it'll tell you again when you're about to run out at the new split time. You're only off duty if you can do other activities. That's the other the other point I was making, like if you're, if you're you drop your trailer and they're loading the trailer and you can take your truck and go to the mall or go go do some other activity that is not working time you can be off duty for those times and it will split but be be very clear about that don't don't use this this little rule as a loophole you know to, to bite off little pieces of your day here and there okay one last point to make about this if uh if this comes up remember it's your choice to split the clock okay if you didn't get enough rest, if you if you feel that you've you've reached your limit, that you don't want to put in those extra hours and drive till one in the morning or something, that's out of your routine. Just remember that that you have to operate the truck on your terms. You you want to be safe, and you don't want to be driving in the middle of the night if you're if you're falling asleep at the wheel or whatever. Uh, make sure you get enough rest and it's your choice. You can split the clock or you can just stick to your normal hours, okay? Don't let anybody push you into doing something that, that's not safe. So I hope this uh, this explains everything in a way that you can understand. I know it's, it's a tough concept and uh, it, it really took me a while to get my mind wrapped around it. But uh, yeah, if, uh, if anybody has anything to add to this or if, I, if I'm explaining it wrong or if you still have questions, don't forget to put those comments below, all right? So give us a thumbs up now. Live for that, that thumbs up from you guys. Hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you down the road. Bye-bye.